From Hollywood. That's right! It's the Tom Likas Show. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? We gotta keep our composure! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show, 2009 edition. And uh, good to be here. Let's talk a little bit about your money. I want to talk about your money this hour. Whatever you've got left. <laughs> Have you got any money left? Holidays are over. They said people uh, this year were not using plastic as much during the holidays. Try to avoid big bills this month. Did you spend less on the holidays when all was said and done? And dumping that girlfriend of yours would have helped, right? Getting that divorce. <laughs> Cut those expenses. Honestly speaking, you're going to think, you know, because I, and I, as I've told you, why do I advise you on money? It's not because I'm a stockbroker, not because I'm a certified financial planner. I'm a self-made multimillionaire. Uh, are my stocks down? Sure they are. Everybody's stocks are down. Absolutely. The question is, how much are you down? How much am I down? And I think I'm down less than you're down. That's the bottom line. But um, why am I here talking to you about this? Well, very simply, I, I am uh, because I am a multi-millionaire and I'm a self-made man. Uh, I uh, know all too well that it doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. Uh, this is the time you tighten the financial screws. So let me tell you some of the ways I have tightened the financial screws. I'm, I'm uh, just uh, laying it out for you. Uh, number one, I called my insurance agent today. Today. And I said, I'm paying too much for car insurance. I want a lower premium. And if I don't get a lower premium, I'm going to shop it. Simple as that. Don't take me for granted. Have you looked at your car insurance lately or your home insurance, fire insurance, earthquake insurance, flood insurance, whatever? It's time to go over that list and to see. For example, uh, they keep telling you that uh, home values are down. Home values are down. Doesn't that mean that uh, you need less insurance? That's a question. I'm asking you. Maybe you want to have that conversation with your insurance guy. As an example of something to do. Do you need a landline telephone anymore? My main landline, I'm, uh, I'm going to get rid of. I'm getting rid of it. I will save myself uh, upwards of 70 bucks a month. Getting rid of my landline telephone. Um, I am going to keep, I do have a landline in the house, but it is uh, attached to my DSL, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my DSL, my fax, and my landline all be one phone line. I will not have three separate phone numbers anymore. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where you are on the scale, everybody's cutting back, and you should be too. Useless spending. How many of you have satellite radio? Do you have satellite radio? How about Sirius and XM? Do you really need that? I have Sirius and XM. I work in the radio business. And uh, Sirius and XM, the two satellite services, they merged. And now most of the channels on Sirius and XM are the same. You don't need both. I'm whacking XM out of the budget. I am whacking it out. I'm cutting down on the number of receivers. Out. Cutting them out. Oh, yeah. I have a refrigerator and a freezer in the part of the house that I don't use very often. Turn them off. They are there, and I will use them when I need them. But I have turned them off. Cleaned out the freezer in my uh, wine bar, and I have just simply turned it off. You know, I'll turn it on when I need to freeze stuff. <laughs> but I don't need it on all the time. In other ways, I've just cut power. Uh, I have put low wattage bulbs in wherever I can. I mean, I literally am cutting the electric bill any way I can, cutting the phone bill any way I can. How about cable? Do you really watch all those channels? Have you looked at satellite? Maybe satellite is cheaper. Maybe it's time to take a look at that. How about your cell phone company itself? Do you know they keep lowering the price of cell phone service? Here in L.A., there's a company called Metro PCS. They charge 30 bucks a month for cell service. Are you paying more than that? 
maybe it's time to call your cell phone company and ask them point blank, what's the best offer by paying the lowest rate? Do you know when they lower the prices at the cell phone company, they don't call you and tell you, hey, guess what? We've got a lower price. They keep charging you the existing rate until you call them and ask them to lower the rate. Dean, have you gotten on the phone with a cell phone company? Have you done that? Oh, Dean's done that. Good. Did you get a lower rate? Yep, just you did, just by asking. I'm telling you, try it. I don't care what cell phone company you're with. Call them and tell them you're thinking of canceling the service. Call them and tell them you think the prices are too high. I'm telling you, you'll get a lower rate. Same thing with interest rates on your credit cards. Call them and tell them. You know what? There's lower rates than you. Dean lowered his Visa card uh, interest rate, the finance charge. He lowered it. Uh, from 13 to 10%. <laughs> Just by calling up and saying, hey, your price is too high. Your finance charge is too high. They lowered it. I'll bet you've never thought of doing these things. I'll bet you thought these prices were not negotiable. Guess what? We're in a recession, folks. Teetering on a depression. Everything is negotiable. I did Christmas shopping this year. Are you aware... I, I wasn't worried about the price of things. I just wanted to buy gifts. I didn't pay full price for anything for Christmas. Everything was 40 and 50% off before December 25th. By the way, if you've been thinking about buying a new car, now is the time. If you have a job and you think you're going to have it. I mean, uh, car sales are down 30 to 40%. Did you see all the major manufacturers, including the Japanese companies, in December, all down 30 to 40-something percent? You think the car dealers are wheeling and dealing? This is a good time to go in. But as I always tell you when I advise you on money, the number one thing you need to be doing before you buy new cars or anything like that the number one thing to be doing is to be paying your debts off. I mean paying them down to zero. No more credit card debts. Haven't we learned our lesson by now? Pay them off. The second thing to do is to give yourself an emergency fund. I've been talking about emergency funds now for a long time. I bet many of you now are finding out the hard way why you needed one. Do you have money in the bank in case you lose your job? <laughs> your neighbors are losing their jobs. Did I hear we lost 2 million jobs in the United States in December alone? 2 million? I think I heard Obama say that today. 2 million. Are you prepared if you lose your job? Do you have money in the bank? Instead of buying things, instead of indulging yourself, the first thing you need to do is pay your bills. And stop worrying about investments, because most of you don't have any money to invest. You, you, you haven't paid your bills. You haven't paid down your debts. And most of you don't have an emergency fund. Bottom line. So I am here to answer these kinds of questions. And again, I don't pretend to be a, uh, a, a professional with a degree, okay? I'm not. I'm not a stockbroker. I'm not a certified financial planner. Uh, I'm not an accountant. All I am is a guy who worked his way up from nothing. Worked his way up from nothing. I know my way around coupons. I know my way around Costco. I know my way around frequent flyer miles. I know my way around paying debts. Today, I have no credit card debt. None. The only credit card debt I have, I will pay off in full at the end of each month. If I can't pay the whole balance off in a month, I'm borrowing too much. I cut it back. And these days, uh, I'm uh, using my credit card even less. It all makes sense. If you have got questions about money, making it, saving it, protecting yourself, I'm the guy to ask. I'm not selling any books. I'm not selling any seminars. I'm not suggesting you flip houses. I'm not suggesting you buy derivatives. I'm not suggesting you do anything crazy. I'm suggesting you do things that will make you safe, make your family safe. Bottom line. So if you've got questions about that, I'm the guy to call. Tom, 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 like it.
1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. The shorter commercial breaks than you've ever heard before. That's right. That means more goddamn show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Okay. We're talking money this hour with you. It's JP on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Son, how are you? I'm good. It's one of your gay sons calling in tonight. Totally cool. So, thank you. Um, first off, I'd like to say long-time listener, uh, first-time caller. Thank you. But my question tonight is, um, I've had to be independent now because I got thrown out from my parents because uh-huh. uh, of my situation. And so I've had to put myself through school and whatnot. But it's like I find myself at a job where I'm in sales, and the money's good, but because it's sales, it's hit or miss depending on the economy. And I just want to know, how do I get out of a month-to-month? A month-to-month What? like living situation as far as finances go because I, fa- I feel like all my money goes to paying my bills I'm well to- uh, let me ask you a question jp did you did you go to college yes i, I just graduated uh a real college or community college real college i went to um csu csu what is csu california state university Oh, okay, CSU. I've never heard it referred to. They always say, like, Cal State Long Beach or Cal State Northridge. I've never heard CSU. Yeah, uh, CSU LA. So, yeah, it's one of the divisions. Okay, all right, very good. And what was your major? Um, at the time, I, I graduated with a psych major because I was looking to go into um, forensics and, like, FBI, but it's just not something I want to do anymore. Right. Uh, if you want to do something with psychology, of course, it's not a bogus degree, but you have to continue schooling. So I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do right, now. Right, right. Uh, well, the first thing you do is not spend. That, that's the first key to saving, is not spending. Yeah. And that means you have to cut your costs to the bone. Yeah. And if I were you, I would cut. I don't know what you spend money on. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, if, you, if, if, if you've been to a Starbucks in the past month, there's step one right there. Yeah. Uh, as an example, do you have any uh, spending habits uh, that you need to look at? You know, I honestly, I've cut back from going out to the... Uh, so, I mean, that's where I've stopped spending money. And I honestly, like, I've taken your advice, like, live within your means. Right. I haven't gone out and shopping as far as, like, clothes or any, like, um, things that aren't needed. So, it's right. like... I've- get above and like paying off student loans and everything also so it's just i want to get to that point where i'm making um more income than what well, i have going out you may need to take a second job yeah if you can get one you need to take one yeah uh you know as psychology uh that i always say that it's uh, the, the female study psychology because they can never decide what they want to major in because they never think they're going to actually have a job doing anything they think someone else is going to pay their bills True. But the reality is that uh, we all, uh, at some point in time, have to step up to the plate and pay the bills. And that means when we go to college, we have to major in something that uh, is going to pay. Yeah. So you need to find some way to make your degree pay, and uh, that's not one of the ones that pays, unfortunately. So, uh, all right, fine, you've got a college degree. Uh, what What are your passions in life? What do you like to do? Uh, myself, I'm more of like an outdoors type person. Right. So I've, I've actually worked for a marathon company before, as far as fundraising and whatnot. So I think that's a division because I'm a very good with people and like. Yeah, events. but how much? How much does fundraising pay as a career? You know, if you're the sponsor or owner, it pays well, especially if it's nonprofit. But um, as far as nonprofits pay well, I'll remember that next time they ask me for a contribution. <laughs> well, it's just because the people who are at the top, they're the ones who get part of that check. Because the rest of the people, they hire volunteers, so therefore, they just take a cut of what they make. I see. Got it. Well, uh, if I were you, uh, what I would do is uh, try to find a second job. That's what you got to do. Uh, you got to try. And by the way, how much do you owe in student loans? Um, right now, I have it down to six thousand. It was at uh, sixteen, so I mean, right. I paid off ten. And what so is your what is your in, what is your interest rate there? Uh, it was I locked it in, so it's a low rate at three point two. Three point two. That's a very low rate. All yeah. Right, so you shouldn't be in any rush to pay that off. No. Uh, well, I'm trying to get it done as soon as possible because, like you said, I want to be able to pay off everything, then have yeah. my um, uh, what is it, rainy day fund, and six months worth. We call of it the we call it the fu fund. 
Yeah. So that when they fire you, you could just say, F you. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> JP, Hi. good luck. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. James, we're talking money on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How you doing? Great. I had a quick question. Um, about three years ago, you know, I started getting all these credit cards and running up, running them up, and not paying them off. Why did you do? Wait, why did you do that? Because I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. I agree. <laughs> and um, so I just let them go. And uh, why did why did you just let them go? Because I was young and I was dumb, and you know how that goes. I mean, couldn't you have made the minimum payment? I, I at first I was, but then um, I just don't know what happened. Ah, uh, yeah, you were immature and too immature to have a credit card. Exactly, and um, well, I, they went into collections, and um, I ignored the the Brilliant. mail that I was getting. Oh, that's and, good. Um, so now, after, after just recently, by the way, what year, do you what do you do with your money? If you're not paying the bills you have, what do you do with the money you have? You know what? I don't even. I have nothing to show for. You have nothing to show for. Great. But, so, what is your question? Okay, now my question is: um, um, I, I finally paid off all the debt I owed just last year, um, the last few months ago. Right. And it's, everything's paid off now, so I'm I'm good. No debt, nothing. I just wanted to see how I can raise up my credit score, because I don't know if I can get credit anywhere. Oh, you can get credit, but you're going to pay for it. Well, that's, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I know the interest is going to be high, but as long as I can get credit cause, and pay everything on time more than the minimum balance, I just want to know if, if there's... Um, look, I have no look even, if you can't, even if you can't get a credit card, you can get a secured credit card. Do you know what that is? I have no idea. All right, you can go to the bank and start a savings account with like 500 or or $1,000. Uh -huh. And then they give you a Visa or a MasterCard okay. with a credit limit of 500 or $1,000. Okay. With the understanding that if you don't pay the bill, they're going to wipe out your credit, your uh, your uh, account. They're going to take your money. Okay. I mean, that's what I want to do. I just, I mean, now I, 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 my game is on, and I just I want to raise my credit score any way I can, you know? Right. Well, that's one way to do it. And then uh, you then you have a credit card to make, you know, hotel reservations or rental car reservations or things like that uh, in the case that you need to do that. Okay. So uh, that's what I recommend to you. Uh, the other thing is pay every bill off on time from now on, forever. Yeah, that's what I've, that's what I've been doing now. You, know, you have to keep doing. You can't yeah. let up. And if you can't make the payments, make the minimum payments. Great, great. All right, thanks, Tom. Never not make payments. <laughs> Never. Ever. So pay everything in full, right? Well, if you can, do. So don't don't spend more than I can afford. Just don't spend more than you make. That's, that's right. I, I mean, come on. There's going to be a limit. Even a credit card has a credit limit. So right. what is the point of doing that? Yeah. I, by the way, don't ever let the fact that there's a sale going on entice you. You know, I, I've I've had people say to me, "Come on, let's buy that. It's twenty percent off." Yeah, but your credit card is twenty four percent. You're right. You put it yeah. on your credit card. You're not saving any money. And you know what? I've been living without a credit card for the last two years, so I've been doing good without one. You know. That's my point. So I mean, I just want to. Raise, that's what my pretty much my concern is: raising my credit score. You know. That's one way to do it. Thank you, Tom. Can you take me out? Lacey Peterson style. Well, it would be tasteless, of course. Amber! Hey! Amber! Amber, make your two friends. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about money on the Tom Likas show. Ashley, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I'm calling because uh, I need some advice. Right. I'm getting married in October. Right. I'm 24. My fiance is uh, 30, and uh, he just lost his job. Okay. Like many people, what did he do for a living? Um, he was in management. Management? <laughs> that doesn't tell me anything. I know, but I don't want to say. No, no, we, uh, darling. We don't know what company he works for, and oh, I don't want to okay. know. He worked in uh, in hotels. All right, fine. He was in management. He had an executive position. Yes. Yeah, and hotels, of course, are not doing well during the recession. 
No, <laughs> not at all. And someone had to take the blame. Exactly. All right, so what, what is your question? What does that have to do with getting married? Um, what do I need to do to protect myself? Um, I'm, I'm pretty good with my money. I have about $20,000 saved, um, but I'm worried that when we combine our finances, that may affect Why? Would, why would you combine your finances? Because um, we're getting married. <laughs> Yeah, Is a, that not a good idea? Well, 50% of the people who get married get divorced. Yeah. And, and what does that mean? That means half of everything you have is his. Mm, that's not good. I mean, do you want to pay him $10,000 to marry you? No. <laughs> well, that's essentially what you're doing. Okay. So what you need to do is have a prenuptial agreement. Okay. Now, a prenuptial agreement can cost up to $5,000. But you're not. It's not based on what you have now. It's based on what you will accumulate over the course of time. Okay. You need to talk to an attorney, and you need to talk to him. By the way, it's kind of low to consider it only because he lost his job. You should have been getting one anyway. Oh no, I, I, I plan to. I plan to. That it, was, does that he was... know that? Yes. Oh, he knows that. Oh, well, then yes. you need to do it. Okay, but as far as um, with his finances, he has some debt. And I don't. So how does that work? Well, when you say he has debt, do you mean he has debt that uh, <laughs> that he can't pay? Well, right now he has no job because of. And he, he has, and he had, he'd saved, of course, no money, right? Well, since he's been with me, he has started saving. But... Uh, meaning, no, he had saved no money before. Oh, before, yeah, but we've been together five years. So, how much does he have saved? Um, probably about two thousand, three thousand. That, that, that's nothing. I know. <laughs> what do you mean? You save two thousand, three thousand, uh, against how much debt? Um, probably about five thousand. Why was he saving the money? Why wasn't he paying down the debt? I'm not sure. All right, now let's do something logical here for a second, okay? Okay. His money is where in a bank? Yes. How much does the bank pay in interest? For his, I'm not sure. Less than one percent. Okay. How much is the interest on his Visa card or Mastercard? I don't know. 7%? <laughs> 9%? 18%? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure. Oh, well, it's at least 7%. Okay. So he's paying a 6% premium. Okay. He, he, to put the money in the bank instead of paying off his debt. Okay, so basically that's what he needs to focus on. It makes no sense to save money if you're then going to maintain a balance on which you're paying 7, 10, 12, 18%. Okay. No sense. You know, you can always get a cash advance and borrow the money back. Okay. But why pay interest on it now? No, that makes sense, definitely. It makes no sense to rent money. <laughs> I, I know that. <laughs> I no, don't no. have a credit card. But I mean, here you're saying, oh, I've got him saving now. But that... Getting him saving is not what you needed to do. It's not time to save until you've paid your debts. Okay. Paying your debts is the first thing you do. Now, will his debt affect me in, like, the long run? Or? Well, no, his bad credit could affect you. Right. Does he have bad credit? I'll mm, bet he does. It's better. <laughs> not, it's not no, bad. No, no. It's, it's, well, it's do you know his FICO score? I don't know. Why not? I don't know. You should. Okay. Why would Thanks. you marry somebody without knowing their FICO score? That's a good question. That's I mean, what I wanted to don't know. You I want... need to know all that stuff. By the way, darling, and I'm not kidding about this. I'm not saying this, uh, you know, just to be facetious. I'm dead serious. Okay. To me, paying bills, listen carefully, paying bills is a measure of integrity and morality. Okay. A person who doesn't pay his bills is immoral. He pays his bills now. <laughs> no, no, he, darling. <laughs> the fact that you had to tell him to do it is a very big red flag. No, I, he, yes. he kind of grew up. He kind of grew darling, up. Darling, you're making excuses. Stop covering for him. <laughs> yeah. I, I love you to death. Stop covering for him. Okay. It, it's, a, it's a sign of an immoral individual. An okay. irresponsible person who you are going to have to care for like a mommy. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> that's what it is. And you need to think about that. Okay. Okay, I will. I'm dead serious. Now, you know I'm always looking out for the guys, but I'm now looking out for you, and I'm telling you, this is what you have to do. You have to look at that. What does that mean when a man doesn't pay his bills? 
phone that he uh, doesn't do what he says he does he's supposed to do. Well, he's an irresponsible, immature, and possibly immoral individual. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, you can say that, but when people borrow more money than they have, when they borrow more money than they're capable of paying off, what do you call it? Young and stupid? <laughs> no, no, no. Not He's not that young. I see on the screen here he's five years older than you. Yeah. You're young. He's yeah. 29 years old. Oh, no, he's 30. 30? That's not young and stupid. Yeah. He, he's almost middle-aged. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so you have to stop making excuses for him, Mommy. Okay. And you have to start looking at him objectively. Okay. I personally, <laughs> and by the way, if you don't know his FICO score, you don't know enough to marry him. I'll tell you what, I, I'm not married, I have no interest in being married, but if I were getting married, not knowing about somebody's credit, not acceptable. I have to know what their credit rating is, and if they don't pay bills, and if they are drowning in debt that they can't pay, I'm out. Do you you're, think forming a a you're forming a corporation with this guy. Do you exactly. understand him? Yes, that's how I view it, too. Well, if I were going into business with somebody and they couldn't pay their bills, I wouldn't be going into business with them. Okay. Think hard. I will. Right. I will. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Tom. 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 Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yes. Shorter commercial breaks means more show. And we have the shortest breaks we've ever had. And the best FICO score of any radio program. Collectively, that's right. See if your radio show can beat the FICO score of my radio show. I don't think so. I got the boys up on the upper 700s. Something to be proud of, I'll tell you what. It's one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Uh, you know, I called to thank you uh, for suggesting the FU fund. Yes. Uh, but if I can, I'd like to comment on something that you said before the break. Uh, you were talking to that girl. You asked that girl a question, you know, what do you call a person, you know, what do you call not paying your bills was, was the basic question that you asked. Right. I called stealing. You know, if you walk into a gas station, you know, you pump a bunch of gas into your car, and then you negotiate with the attendant at the gas station for a payment plan for that gas, and then you don't pay for that gas as promised, you're stealing. Yeah. It's the same way with credit cards, with car loans and mortgages, et cetera. You're getting a service or a product on the promise that you'll pay for it. It's right. stealing. Yes. I don't see how people don't get that. But anyways, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to thank you for suggesting the FU fund. You, uh, Years ago at this point, you had suggested it, and I followed your advice, and I set one up. And I have been unemployed now for a year. And I have, uh, I mean, at my current living expenses, you know, supposing something doesn't happen, I could probably go for another year just on my FU fund without even, you know, going into my investments for retirement. Uh, in You know, in the meantime, you know, I've, I've completely avoided getting a job and just concentrated fully on, edu you know, getting new training. I've uh, been going to school for nursing. I, you know, I, I looked into the program. I looked at where the field was going. I, you know, I said to myself, you know, this is a good investment. And, uh, I mean, I, I can't thank you enough for suggesting that. I mean, if, if people haven't figured that out yet, if people haven't set one up for themselves yet, now is a good time to start because you, you never know what's going to happen in the future. No, there's no doubt about that. If people haven't heard, an FU fund is essentially a savings account. Uh, where you put money away that would pay at least six months of your expenses, and I say now at least a year. And, uh, you know, you figure out what your monthly expenses are, multiply by 12, and that's what you need to have in an account that is easily accessible. Uh, it's liquid. And the FU fund means if your boss becomes a creep or you're getting sexually harassed at work or uh, whatever, you could just say FU to the boss and stay home for a while. And you need to be able to do that. 
You need to have an FU fund. You've got to have it. It's more important than anything else you do. Pay off your debts and have an FU fund. Got to do it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to John on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Uh, I, was, I was calling because I was thinking of buying a house right now. How old are you? 20. Uh, yeah. How much money do you have in the FU fund? About 5000 5000 <laughs> What are you buying a house with? Well, I was looking at the rates right now. Um, no, no, no. Forget a... the rates. What are you buying a house with? Uh, well, I have a pretty, I have a stable job. So... What are you buying? Now, I'm not asking how you're paying the mortgage. You need a 20% down payment. Where are you getting it from? Well, actually, the, the house I was looking for is about $48,000, so... Uh, wait, a $48,000 house? Where is it, Wyoming? No, it's in... I live in the IE, right? And I really like it here. There is no $48,000 house within the sound of my voice. Uh, it's in Banning, the city of Banning. Right Banning, here. California. You're telling me you can get a house in Banning for $48,000? Yes. Now, what is this, a cardboard, uh, cardboard <laughs> box? No, they're all the repossessed houses. That's how much they're going for. Uh, yeah. Where is Banning? Uh, you know where Morang the Morongo Casino's at? Yeah. Right and, and and do you do you have a job near Banning? Uh actually no. <laughs> no. So how are you gonna pay the mortgage if you're gonna have a house in Banning and you have no job near there? Well my job's only about thirty miles away from there, so it's about So you have to commute. Years. Yeah. Right. Now, do you have a 20% down payment? No. Well, it would be about 10%, and they're only asking for a 30% down. So. I don't care what they're asking for, son. Uh, you know, they were asking for zero down, and that's how we got into the mess we're in now. Yeah. I mean, the By the way, if you pay if you pay uh, too little down, you're going to have to pay for what they call PMI, which is mortgage insurance. And they add that to the price of your house. And you'll be paying interest on it forever. Well, I think the loan would only be for about 15 years. Only 15 years. And by the way, what are the property taxes on this house? I'm not sure. How, how can you buy a house without knowing what the property taxes are? Well, it's because right now I'm trying to get everything ready to actually get the house. I haven't... So I don't know hey, getting the, the, paying the property taxes is an essential part of owning property. Oh, so the property tax would be the tax you pay on the house? On the on the land and the house, yes. There's a tax. Oh. Did you know that? Yeah, I kinda yeah, I knew you had to pay. What do you mean you kinda knew? You you gotta know this stuff cold, son. Yeah, well I knew you had to pay taxes, property taxes on it, but Yeah, but you don't know how much they are. No. Don't you think you should? Yeah, I think I should. Right. How much does it cost to insure this house? Uh it was gonna be about mm, well, because as I've been looking at different houses, the price kind of ranges between them. So what? Because I'm not exactly sure. I'm asking about house. the insurance on this house. I'm not sure. Uh, do you have a ballpark estimate? About three hundred. Three hundred what? Dollars. Per what? Per month. Are, are you asking me or telling me? No, that's around where it's at. I don't know how much it costs to insure your house. No, I mean, that's, that's what around with the price it is. Uh-huh. And uh, what kind of insurance would that be? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh -huh. Do you know enough to do this, really? Well, it's just because the price is pretty low. I don't care how low the price is. Do you know many times the price is low for a reason? Well, yeah. They're, they're for example, okay. if your house is forty-eight thousand dollars, it could be because there are structural deficiencies in the house, or other problems with the house, or the property, or where it's located. Do you know if any of that is true? The reason that they're so cheap is because when they got foreclosed, a lot of the people took out the water heaters and the most expensive stuff, and the houses are pretty much they're like fixer upper houses. Right. Yeah, and what do you know about doing that? Well, actually, uh, I'm a, I have my plumber's license, and I've been working in construction for about four years now. So, so how much would it cost you to take a $48,000 house and outfit it with a furnace and a water heater and copper plumbing and all the things you would need to use the house? 
Uh, about $2,000. $2,000, son. No, it's because I'm a plumber. I'm a I don't handy. care if you're a plumber. Do you know what a hot water heater itself costs? Come on. It costs $800. That's a lot of money. How much is a furnace? Furnace is about $300. No, it isn't. Yeah, you're full of crap. <laughs> there are no $300 furnaces. And I'll tell you something else. What about air conditioning? It gets pretty hot out that way. Well, I lived here all my life. I never actually had air conditioner, so... Uh-huh. I'm pretty used to the heat right here already, so... Right. Why is it so important to you to own this house? Well, because my, right now what I pay in rent is about $800. And if I get the house, my payment will drop down to $400 a month. So 400 a month? Yeah. But uh, you're not counting taxes or insurance. Oh, no, not before insurance, yeah. So 400 plus 300, you said, for, what was it, uh, yeah, 300 so in taxes? It's... 300 insurance. Now you're up to 700. Then insurance. I'm sorry, then yeah. property, uh, so property tax and insurance will bring you well above what you're paying now. Well, yeah, but I mean, then the cost of uh, the cost, the fixed cost of having to buy all of these uh, items like a hot water heater and a furnace and, and and piping and probably baseboard heating or whatever or or uh, ducks or whatever you have to buy. Come on. Well, yeah, but I mean, like really, I like I don't like I'm I'm Mexican, so all like all the little details are not really that bad. I mean, the houses I've grown up in were dumped, so. <clears throat> Yeah, but, but, so you want to continue the tradition? No, no, no. I'm saying I can take it for a while. In the meantime, while I'll fix up the house. Huh? So it wouldn't be a real Again, I don't think you know enough to do this. You don't even know what the property taxes are. Well, Tom, I think I have to do my research then. I think you do. Well, I mean, for example, I'm... what if the property taxes are way more than the cost of the house? Right. Yeah, so I... Uh, you think I should look at the property tax before? Well, I would serve that, among other things. Yeah. Okay, Tom. Well, thanks for the information. You know, that's, I guess I'm looking into that. So. I don't mean to rain on your parade, son, but uh, you got a lot of work to do. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 The Tom Like Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking money here. It's Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, how's it going? I'm calling because um, uh, I just reported a card. Let me tell this lady. Okay, I got to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I just took this uh, 04 Range Rover. Yeah, you should have heard him bitching and moaning. I made my payments. I made my payments. Yeah, no, you didn't because I wouldn't be here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I talked to you about three years ago about becoming a helicopter pilot. And uh, you said, just go and do it, you know, make it happen. And I, I was making it happen, you know. I, actually, uh, I am a pilot. I have it, have the first uh, certificate. But in the middle of get, going to get my commercial license where I can actually get paid to fly, the school went bankrupt. You know, it's called a... Uh, they just went belly up and they just took everyone's money and we're like in a in, in this hole that we that they dug for us seventy thousand dollars hanging over our head and uh we can't get another loan to um to continue the school have you uh talked to an attorney about this oh yeah there's every, everyone is uh you know there's a big lawsuit there's like 2500 people that are in the same position i'm in you know i mean right. it's a it's it's huge. Well, it sounds to me like you need to uh, hire an attorney, maybe a class action lawsuit. Well, the, the guy, the guy, he tried to run for sheriff of Las Vegas, and he got denied once they found out that he was in this, uh, you know, this this deal that was going down. Yeah. Well, if and, I if I were you, I would get with some of the other people who are aggrieved, uh, maybe talk to an attorney and see if you can do a class action lawsuit. I think that's what you got to do. Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Glad to talk to you. Yeah. Okay, here's a scenario. Uh, I started a business about three years ago, landscaping business. Things are going okay. Um, recently, the economy and all, things have gotten slow. Couldn't keep up with competitors. Uh, 
racked up some credit card debt. Why did you do that? Uh, basically, part of it was just paying for bills because I took on all. I also took on contracts. You know, for advertising and stuff like that, and I was I was trying to keep another job at the same time, just trying to basically bring as much money as I could to keep the business, to try to grow the business. And uh, I needed it at the time. Granted, I did probably make some frivolous purchases that I probably shouldn't have. That was stupid. Right. Uh, you know, when you're building a business, you have to hunker down. You have to uh, honestly, you have to be uh, in the sacrifice mode. Right, right. Not the superficial, stupid purchases mode. Right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, so, I mean, some of the debt also went towards stuff, I mean, business expenses, put stuff that was put into the business, like tools, gas, I mean, just, just things like that. Um, so basically my question is, I'm running into some but, uh, did, didn't you? Did you have a corporation? I didn't incorporate. So you never were able to get uh, corporate loans or anything like that? Small business loans? Uh, not at the time. I wasn't, no. Basically, I was using my credit cards. Why, um, why, why didn't you look into doing it the other way? One particular credit card company that was working with me pretty well, and they were helping me out, making some big purchases that I needed for jobs. Uh, what, helping you out? Like all those mortgage companies were helping people out buying houses. They were helping them out. I mean, it's a, I mean, it was a no interest rate fee, basically a... a um, that you know, a teaser rate. You're not paying no interest now, are you? Well, now I am because the uh, account is gone, is defaulted and everything, but... Uh, oh, boy. Uh, at the time, you know, it was an annual fee type card, and, you know, I was just able to, you know, make the purchases I needed and then pay it off, as, you know, as soon as I completed the job and everything. Well, if your thought is to file for bankruptcy, uh, it's a lot harder to, to successfully file for bankruptcy these days and get away without paying your debts. You better see an attorney and find out what your rights are, and you're going to have to pay for that, for God's sake. Good luck. The Tom Likas Show.